Welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm your host, Keith Downey, and we're talking about the next right thing with Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly, all about Easter. Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Debbie and Adam. Thank you, Keith. He is risen indeed. Thank you so much. I am Debbie Giorgiani with Adam Bly. We are the co-hosts of The Spirit World, heard on Saturdays right here on Guadalupe Radio Network on 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. And um, important this week, Adam, you and I are focusing the entire week on Be Not Afraid. We are an Easter people. Alleluia is our song. Divine Mercy, St. Faustina, the whole entire week. And we're super excited about it. But before we begin with this little segment on the next right thing, we're opening up the phone lines right now. We want to ask the Morning Joy listeners, what did you learn from this Lenten experience? Have you grown closer to God? Do you have a better understanding of yourself? We want to know. You got to go quickly to the phones. And here is the number. 877-757-9424. And Keith mentioned that we're um, also our affiliates, Catholic Spirit Radio. Guys, call in. How about Aquinas Communications? You guys call in from Dubuque, Iowa. You love calling in. So 877-757-9424. Okay, Adam, take it away. This is an exciting day on Easter Monday. Yeah, thank you, Deb. And I woke up feeling great today. I am really excited about, well, I am, to be honest, really excited about Lent being over. Um, It was challenging, but here's the thing, Deb, here's what's so great about this, is this is a time, this this Easter season, this Easter tide, these 50 days from Easter Sunday to Pentecost Sunday, this is a time of our new life. This is a time to experience our new selves. You know, largely Lent is about dying to sin. It's about letting go of some of the maybe not so nice parts of our lives, parts of ourselves, the attachment to sin, you know, the the things that aren't so great. And here we are now, we're going to really focus the next 50 days on living out those things that we have picked up, the parts of the new self that has been resurrected. You know, we leave in the tomb the rags of sin, the rags of the old self, and we emerge from the tomb with Jesus, living out a new self today. So this is great. Um, This this time, and let let me let me tell you something, Deb. Really interesting thing happened on Sunday. I was at, at vigil mass, and you know, Father was doing the renewal of the baptismal promises. This, this is what made it click for me, the, the whole thing. He said, in the ancient church, when you renewed your baptismal promises, he said, everybody turn around and face west, which was away from the altar, right? And for those parts of the renewal of the baptismal promises where you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty show and essentially reject sin, you face west. And then when it's time to affirm your commitment to Jesus and accept him and his church, you turn before doing that and you face the altar, you face east. And boy, that made it click for me because I've never done that before or heard of that before. But it was so powerful because you were physically turning away from Satan and sin and physically turning towards the altar, the crucifix over the altar, uh, turning as a group too. That was the other powerful thing about liturgy is I wasn't doing it alone in, in a room. I was with hundreds of people, and as we turned as a group, that was an encouragement. It was an encouragement that we're doing this together. I have a community. We pray for each other. There's spiritual strength in that community. It was just so beautiful. Okay. So, and by the way, uh, one of the things that also clicked for me in that moment, Mm -hmm. did you know that Easter is just the old English word for East? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Right? It just means East. Cool. And what is East referring to? It refers to the rising of the sun. It's mm-hmm. turning towards the light. 
Right. Real so, quickly, I just want to say mm-hmm. that exercise or that experience of having, I, I tried to picture myself doing that with the whole entire congregation. And you're right, that does have a powerful impact. And that's what we're trying to convey here on Morning Joy and, and on the spirit world is this idea that, you know, this isn't just listening to the radio. This is really supposed to be transformative, right? And to have things affect you deeply uh, from the inside out. And so by you sharing that Adam that I that helped me I hope it helped others as well and it all works together so if we think about Divine Mercy Sunday which is coming up here on the 7th right it's coming up in a few days if we imagine turning away from Satan that we leave behind in the desert we leave behind in the struggle of Lent and we and we leave that death behind us and we turn towards Jesus standing there this Sunday that we're coming towards, the Divine Mercy Sunday, what are some of the beautiful things that he encourages us as we move towards him on Sunday? He's encouraging us, number one, of course, to trust in his mercy. But if we think of that Divine Mercy image, he's also showing us his heart and what comes from his heart and the grace that comes from his heart. So it's not just about, I'm sorry, Lord, for, you know, when I messed up, but it's also about bring your heart into me let me enter your heart let your grace move out from me and through me his grace move out from me and through me just like the light comes from your heart in that image it's not just about feeling bad about sin and letting it go but it's about being a channel of his grace in the world and that's what we're moving towards on sunday so basically deb the the thing i wanted to really emphasize the practical thing the next right thing that's so practical is this Easter, this 50 days, this is a time to practice these parts of the new self that we've been resurrected into. This is a time to solidify those changes, not only to solidify that we've left those sins behind and we're gonna we're gonna leave them behind. We're not gonna pick them back up. All right, we've made some progress here. We've received a lot of grace, but now we're gonna practice the good and new things that we're going to add to our lives, the new self that we're going to take on, this is the time to solidify that during these 50 days. So it's not like, oh, shoo, we made it, we can just forget about all this and go back to our regular life. This is a time of practice, but a positive time of practice. It's, it's not, it's not hard. Remember my yoke is easy and it's light. It's his grace. That's going to make that easy for us now. And the first phase of that is moving towards divine mercy Sunday. Well, Adam, you just said something very powerful because the idea of practicing, you know, we, they call us practicing Catholics, right? And, and we always say in, in life coaching, practice makes permanent, not practice. You know, I know the old saying is practice makes perfect, but practice makes permanent. And that is so true. We need to practice this. We can't just stop here because we have been given so many graces and blessings through the Lenten season. Now we are in this time to really practice the new self. And that's important to do. Get off the bleachers, guys, and get in the game because this is important time. And, And just look at the world right now. There's a lot of things that are so uncertain and and causing a lot of fear and anxiety. So we have to really, I believe, stay focused now more than ever, Adam. What do you say to that? Yeah, and you know, a little a little simple thing you can do is go online, do a search on your phone, get an image of the divine mercy and make it your background on your phone. Yes. Amen. Okay, because you're gonna see that image throughout your day. And every time you see that image, let it be a tiny little reminder to stay focused on the new self and moving towards that mercy of Jesus, but also the grace that comes from his heart that you're going to embody. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And you know what? I just want to share with our listeners, Adam, if I can, uh, again, I know that Keith is going to be mentioning it all week, but we have such a big week planned uh, for this Divine Mercy Week. There's the uh, Novena has started 
uh, on Friday. You can catch up the Divine Mercy Novena. We go into Divine Mercy Sunday. We have Rick Paolini coming on um, several times this week to share with us. He's an expert, I believe, in Divine Mercy. He's going to get us ready for the grace of Divine Mercy Sunday that we can all enter into. This could be the week that that spiritually changes so many lives. Um, and I really just hope everybody tunes in. Tell your friends this is an important week. I missed it last week. At, last week. I missed it last year, Adam. I actually heard about it on one of the pledge drives that I was hosting. And I, I was so I was so bummed because I missed out on so many of the elements of Divine Mercy Week and into Divine Mercy Sunday. And I that's why I said to you, Adam, we've got to focus the whole week this year on it so that everybody can participate and no one can miss out because I just I, I think it's very important. Plus I wanted to say to you, Adam, happy anniversary. This is our anniversary of the spirit world airing on um, being produced by Guadalupe Radio Network. It it, it aired uh, almost a year before that, but Guadalupe picked it up April 1st last year. And then let's not forget that tomorrow is the 19th anniversary of John Paul II's passing on April 2nd. And he, he was the one who said, we are an Easter people. Alleluia is our song. Be not afraid. I mean, he's the one who promoted divine mercy. So we got to thank him. And this is why this week is so powerful. Real quick, Adam, before we send it back to Keith. Yeah, Deb. And, you know, to go a little bit deeper, another next right thing you can do this week, if you've never learned it, pick up the divine mercy chaplet. This would be a great time during these days leading up to Divine Mercy Sunday. You don't have to do it all year, but just try it once or twice. See how it feels for you. Um, do that little bit of work. You can go online. You, I'm sure you could find a video or you know a good website. Um, try that chaplet. Try it. This is a time to grow a little bit. I am. I'm just thrilled that people people are willing to go deep. I can't say it enough. I can't stress it enough. It's coming up in prayer all the time for me, Adam. And I feel like I'm, I'm doing something wrong if I don't share it because God has um, allowed me to have a ministry work and, and an, sometimes an open microphone like this. And I just feel like we've got to go deeper. We're at a point where if, if we stay in the shallow end of the pool, I don't think it's going to serve us well. What do you say? Yeah, Deb, you know, there, there's two aspects of what you just said that, that really ring true for me. And one is that it's not about being like done. You haven't crossed the finish line and you're, and you're finished and you just sit back and say, okay. It's, you, life is always a, a journey and you're either journeying towards God or you're journeying towards the devil. And I know that sounds kind of trite and extreme, but really Jesus was clear about that you you need you are either moving towards god or you're drifting towards the devil you might think that you're sitting still and not doing anything but basically you're in a stream and you're drifting downstream if you're not swimming so that's one analogy but another thing that strikes me deb about what you just said is the fact that as christians we're a resurrection people and what does that mean we're about being alive and living forward not about being stuck in the regrets about our past and our sins and the, and the, the maybe not so nice seasons of our lives. But this isn't just an easy hand waving and saying like, okay, you know, God forgives me and, and now I'll just go back to doing whatever. As Christians, we are not just trying to stop the bad choices and the sins and, and maybe the not so nice parts of our lives, but we're about really changing and trying to live as holy a life as possible and live that life forward to be resurrected with Christ in a sense every day. You can think of this in terms of every morning when you wake up, you know, a little prayer, Lord, let this day be a life that is more like you and in you, you know, and fueled by your grace. Let me die to my old self a little bit today. And let me not just die to my old self, the critical next part that we're in, in now in Easter, this Easter season, it's not just to die to the old self, That's that was Lent. Now we're going to live in a new self, which is closer to Christ. And so, again, it's not about saying, oh, well, my bad behavior doesn't count, and I can just continue to do bad things because God forgives me. We have to remember that this time of mercy that we're heading towards Divine Mercy Sunday, 
that mercy is there that that forgiveness is there especially sacramental forgiveness and confession it's there for the person that is making a firm amendment not to sin in those ways again a lot of us it's easy to forget that i can just say oh, i'll go to confession confession and rinse and repeat and continue to sin what's required is a firm amendment to change our lives in order to receive absolution for those sins and we've talked about this so many times deb you know the rooting out of, of the sources of sin in our life and that's that long process it's going to be a lifelong process but boy uh, the Christian life right now this is a, a powerful thing and let me just throw in something I've learned from working in the exorcism world for so many years you know been a thousands of exorcisms at this point the final hurdle that a lot of people are stuck on that allows these demonic problems to continue is them feeling that they deserve it in some way for their mm -hmm. past the accuser telling them you know you're unworthy of him he doesn't love you Jesus doesn't love you you know you should only be with us because look at the things that you did the devil wants us looking back and if he can convince us that we're dirty and filthy and only worthy of him he can hold on to us in different ways now I'm not talking about you know it's the same thing with temptation and sin as it is in possession right. for the average person he wants us to look back at our at our bad selves the moments that were bad and focus on those and feel like we deserve him you gotta work to let those go in the sense of changing and moving forward with with Christ and that's what divine mercy is going to give you we're, we're we're looking at this Sunday there's Jesus standing there there's the light of grace coming from his heart there are the wounds that he has received to pay for our sins and what's at his feet Jesus I trust in you I trust in your mercy mm -hmm. so this is a time to not be mired in the past and the guilt that the enemy wants us to focus on which leaves us stuck in the past in an right. old version of ourselves that should be dead in the tomb now but to move forward towards towards Christ as a resurrected people we are a new creation today and we want to embody that and live it as we move through Easter amen brother you preach it I love it that was amazing okay but I couple things because this this segment is called the next right thing so here's what Adam and I feel that the next right thing is uh, be prepared to go to confession with a plan a plan you know get it be intentional about getting out and away from those past sins and move forward and have a plan and go to confession to get ready for divine mercy sunday very important maybe jump in on the novena and catch up okay because the novena is happening right now the divine mercy novena the chaplet that adam talked about absolutely the divine mercy chaplet get the image of jesus i trust in you the saint faustina divine mercy image put it on your phone put it in your office put it in your car have it if it's if it's on a prayer card have it blessed um, folks, this is the time. This is a very powerful time of blessing and graces. So please journey with us, stay with us. This is very, very important time. And we really need you to spread the word because you can't just take it all in for yourself and march forward pass it on to to friends and family members and also the way to stop the world from being so loud is to remind yourself of the story just like adam uh, talked about uh, that jesus conquered death and he rose from 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 the dead and he he fulfilled everything that was told to us it is a true story it really happened and we believe it and look forward to heaven Focus on heaven, and then it'll encourage you to, to leave the past behind. What do you say to that, Adam, real quick? Yeah, amen. Um, that is the thing, to look forward to Jesus, look forward to being with him. You're going to be with him in a particular way on Divine Mercy Sunday, and then keep moving towards him for the rest of your life so that when you have that final encounter with him, that it be a fruitful and beautiful one, that you hear those words, you know, welcome, good and faithful servant beautiful okay jesus we trust in you be not afraid take it away keith amen thank you so much wow that was very powerful both of you thank you so much debbie georgiani and adam bly on the next right thing also mentioned earlier you can catch them on the spirit world every single saturday at 10 a.m central 
You can find them on GRN Online on our YouTube, GRN Online. But we got a couple announcements. We've got two Fishers of Men Benefits Dinner happening uh, simultaneously here. We got the 12th annual WMET Fishers of Men Benefit Dinner honoring the little sisters of the poor in the DC area. Our very own Debbie Giorgiani will be the keynote speaker. I want you also to join Archbishop Lori for a vigil mass at the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception prior to the dinner. That's Tuesday, April 9th. Tuesday, April 9th. Go to well, I'll hold on to the website here until we do the next one. So the 17th annual South and Central Texas Fishers of Men is happening on the same day, April 9th, Tuesday. Uh, we got uh, keynote speaker, Father Craig Vasek, and then we're honoring Bishop Gary Yannick. So please go to grnonline.com slash F-O-M if you're in either of those areas. So that's grnonline.com slash F-O-M. Now, coming up next, we've got Mondays with Monsignor Charles Pope talking about Easter. Kind of that's the, the name of the game here for the next week or more. My goodness, 50 days until Pentecost. But we're talking. Stay tuned for Mondays with Monsignor Charles Pope on Morning Joy, where truth matters. You're listening to Morning Joy, where truth matters.